then one thing I want to talk about is is that scene. Yeah. That scene in the underground, mm. which was for me, it was the greatest scene in the whole movie. Yeah. And but the thing the thing about it was th this is an old this is an old cinema trope. You have this powerful character that's somehow for a moment exits his or her sort of powerful world and mm. then comes and meets mere mortals. Yeah, yeah. And that always sort of works in movies. And I, I was wondering, especially with you, because you're, I know that you're sort of interested in this, in, in the, in this sort of evolved human being kind of thing, mm. this, this superhuman thing. Yeah. And this, this has a sort of a link to that as yeah, well. That's, true. That it's a, that's a good that, point. That, that do you have any ideas why that always seems to resonate with us? Because it's 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 sort of hero worship mm. in a way, but it's all and and then it humanizes the the hero yeah. kind of way. But it's still sort of it feels the whole thing about being starstruck yeah. is weird. It is. It, it, it's it's really weird. Why why does that why does that happen? Why do we think that that's that's cool when it happens to us, and why do we think that it's cool when we see it happening to somebody else? That is a really interesting question, and I really don't have a good answer. I mean, it's funny when you think about it, if you really want to go meta on it, he goes underground, yeah. which is basically the classic sort of a thing that a hero has to do in many, like in Greek mythology. There's this underworld, and many times the heroes go there to rescue something, and there. And then there's these subhumans <laughs> sort of living in the dark. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, maybe this is uh, he lives in this sort of um, let's call it a world of heroes. It's uh, basically like a, like a Christ coming yeah. down to yeah. the world of mortals, and then learning something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it was. I, I thought it was a really great scene. It was. It was, it was really a, excellent. It was really well written and really well um, acted. Yeah. And then, but but it's such a it's such a trope. It's it's weird because you you see that in a lot of things. It, 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 usually in the movies, in comic movies, that's mm. like a movie star who suddenly has to take like the bus yeah. or something like yeah. that, um, or whatever. Yeah, and, and, it's, uh, and it always plays. It always. It always plays with the crowd. Well, we are ordinary people, most of us. Yeah, but not so me, they. but <laughs> <laughs> so almost yeah, but, always. Yeah, but they are like it's like um, true some combination of um, I don't know genetic ability and um, just sheer luck and um, hard work. Some people become something more than just their lives, at least in our imaginations, is something more. I mean, when you think about the star cult, it's basically like um, the gods of Olympus. They're so far away, they're the, they, they live this sort of a existence that we can only dream of, and then one of them comes down and sort of... Uh, it, if you say in Bolt or something like that walked in here right now, it would be like this. It wouldn't be the same if... Uh, if, uh, let's say, uh, John the janitor walked in. There's yeah. something, it's, it's sort of that, like this weird intangible thing that people might acquire through great achieve, achievements, sort mm -hmm. of, like, yeah. Yeah. And even, in, I, but I really, I have a hard time putting my finger on it, that what it really is, yeah. it's sort of difficult. It's like they had some sort of, uh, this, this is going to sound really kitschy, they have some sort of like a inner gold, like a gold stash or something that sort of glows. It's something a bit more than just a human being. And it's, uh, of course, there's this sense of awe, just. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the scene was really excellent. And um, I wonder, uh, I mean, the, the Helsinki Sanomat critic was pretty clear in her, his point of view, that it has to be fictionalized because Churchill apparently didn't, according to him or her, really didn't care about the common people. 
yeah. that much. Yeah, that's that's what I'm understood as well. And and like it was pointed out in the movie as well that he he, he hadn't ever boiled an egg, boiled an yeah, egg, yeah. And, and and really you know silver spoon mm, kind of thing. No. Um, but but yeah, it it it, it must be fictionalized. Mm. It must be. I don't think that it's possible that no. it's it, it actually happened. But it was it was a good. It was a good dramatic device. It was and really it good. Was, uh, yeah. And I, I also don't know how much of, I haven't researched whether how much of that actually happened in that space of time. Yeah. All the all the things that were. I mean, there's a, there's obviously there's a lot of historical documents concerning when the speeches were made mm. and so on and so on. But uh, but how? Do you have to be pretty I, accurate when you make a film like that? Sort of. I think. Yeah, you can't. You yeah. Well, some it leeway, depends. Yeah, it depends on what you're sort of expecting the audience to expect, because a lot of times, also, uh, I've gotten a, a, a bit tired of the based on true events mm. or this is a true story and yeah. so on, because usually it's 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 in some way mm. it's bullshit. Yeah, uh, and. Almost all the time, you have to dramatize at least a part yeah. of it just to keep the story going. Mm. And because life doesn't obey the rules no. of, of of storytelling, then it would have been cool if, if um, they're let's say halfway through the movie or three th um, three fourths, like almost at the end of the movie, Optimus Prime had shown up. That would have been really cool. Yeah, yeah. And then just yeah, then just. Complete fictionalization of the events. Yeah, yeah. and my, Michael Bay takes over for <laughs> yeah. the rest of the film. <laughs> Joe, Joe can go home, <laughs> and Michael Bay and his lens flare team come <laughs> over. And I wonder how big the lens flare team is. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, it's it's uh, because I I think that most I don't know most, but maybe at least a considerable some of. British people must know the story of Churchill and the, the sort of the events during that period of time pretty well, yeah. I would imagine. Yeah, but it's also, I mean, I know I, obviously there's a lot of people who uh, go to the movies sort of trying to find flaws and, mm. and really into, and I don't mind that being really, I, I think that, that if you're really into, say, history, yeah then you want to have it accurate mm. but this is not a historical account this no, is a not. movie no. so there in in those cases i'm all, always sort of ready to give some leeway yeah for no. the director or You'd actors or what you have to because otherwise it it's just it's just basically documentary no. and unless that particular set of events happened in that just that am amount of time mm. and in exactly that way that it, it, it feels like a story, no. then you're going to have to have to take some artistic license. You're right. And it really made me interested about that period in time because I was sort of amazed because I didn't really know the story about the Dunkirk events that well. Yeah. Uh, it was sort of astonishing, astonishing to see it play out in a way that is so uncertain and so like the possibility of failure is so imminent or obvious yeah. that it was sort of uh, mind-boggling. Yeah. 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 It was. It was. If if Omaha Beach was the turning point of the war, this mm. could have easily been the other way. Yeah. That that if. If it, if they would have decimated the the British army, I think the Om Omaha Beach might have been in Dover. No. Um, and of of course, there's Pearl Harbor as well. But this, I mean, it was, yeah. And I've never lived in 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 a time of war, and I hope I never have have to. But but the uncertainty of all of that, mm. when the enemy is actually like a few kilometers away yeah. and there's just a fairly small body of water yeah. and they've sort of rolled mm. through the entire Western Europe yeah. 
um, yeah, that's, uh, that's yeah, you, quite a, yeah, it quite is. a thing. I mean, and that was the thing about Churchill also, but um, the dude must have had like, uh, let's call them big cojones, yeah. for lack of a better word, because I mean, in that situation where you have to really lead a nation, I mean, I get a panic attack when I go to a grocery store and have to choose bread. Not really, but all you can understand the sort of the comparison between um, there was like this stand-up comic who talked about strength in different generations. He was talking about his grandfather who was in the war, and I don't know which war, but a war anyway. And he made a sort of the same allegory that I'm making that you have to be like uh, this inner strength has to be immense. Yeah. To but, make uh, but, but I've always argued in those cases that it's also the circumstances that force you that is true force you to be a certain kind of person true. and because the al alternative is just to crawl up and die yeah and then when that when that alternative is presented to you people tend to go with trying something else that is true than just you know,